Hi, everybody. Welcome to Life Stories. I'm so glad that you're here. Today on the podcast, I speak with Angie Del Moro from Braveheart Volunteers in Alaska. Braveheart Volunteers' mission is to provide companionship, respite, and education to those facing loneliness, grief, and end of life. Many of these volunteers are extensively trained and they sit with people in their last days so that they don't have to be there alone. Every week I do a word of the week and obviously these words are not new words or I don't feel like I'm trying to teach you a word that you obviously already know. I do these words to bring up an idea that maybe we can think about and focus on in our own lives. And so the word of the week this week, it's the word of the week is presence. Can you imagine being at the end of your life and not having anyone to be there with you? That's what some of these volunteers do for people in their community in Alaska. I can't fathom having to live your life, the end of your days by yourself. Listening to Angie tell these stories really made me think and be aware of um, wanting to reach out and wanting to be kind and wanting to be available to people because sometimes Sometimes you don't realize how much your presence means to someone else. You know, I've been with friends before who were struggling, who couldn't talk. They couldn't say, they couldn't talk about what was going on and how difficult their circumstances were, but just being present in their life made a big deal. And I've had people do that for me. Sometimes I can't voice how I feel. Sometimes I can't express my hurt, but knowing that I have a friend present makes such a huge deal. And so I hope that we'll pay attention to our lives. Even this week, if there's someone going through uh, something difficult, I hope that we will take the time to let our friends know, let, let our family know, let the people know in our world that our presence is available for them anytime that they need it, just to even sit and be there. I hope you'll enjoy this conversation. I hope it makes you think about your own life and about the people in it. And I hope you're inspired to maybe help someone in the way that Angie's helping with these volunteers. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Yeah. How are you? It's good. It's just me today. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah. And it my the sun, I'm we live in Southeast Alaska and it's uh-huh. a rainforest, really and yes. truly. Yes. And, but the sun came out today. So oh, my funny. office is lit up. So I don't know. It's fine. No, it's totally fine. I bet, you know, I was thinking, I was looking at your pictures online and I thought the only thing I know about, is it, are you in Sitka? Sitka? Yeah, we're in Sitka. Only thing I know about Sitka is from the movie, The Proposal. (laughs) And it's probably not even filmed there. It's probably filmed somewhere else. But that's all, that's the only reference I have. There there are a few, um, like outdoor scenes yeah, that, that are Sitka, but yeah. yeah it, the rest of it's not. Yeah. I bet it's still, still beautiful. Love it. Oh yeah, it, I'm sure. It I is. Know. It's, we have gorgeous, majestic mountains right, right. on the water and yeah, it's a That's great awesome. place to be. That's good. I'm so glad. Well, I'm so excited to talk to you today. You know, when I'm reaching out to people to talk to in my podcast, I look for unique organizations or unique things that people are doing. I I try to find things that people aren't doing everywhere. I wish they were doing them everywhere and maybe they are in other places, but I love, I love your organization and what you were doing. So you are with Braveheart Volunteers. Did you start this organization? No, it's, it started in 2001 by a couple of nurses Uh that saw a gap in like hospice palliative care and so um, it, 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 initially it was a faith-based group um, yeah. that kind of just concerned citizens that came together. And then yeah. they started, um, it was started out as Sitka's Faith in Action, and then it turned into a nonprofit. Yeah. And we got the name Braveheart Volunteers. Um, the Alaska Natives in the area, predominantly, um, they're Clinkett, and they gave us the name um, I can't say it in Clinkett, but um, it means be of brave heart. And um, that is spoken when somebody is, um, you know, at the end of life and they're letting go, the people surrounding them say, you know, be of brave heart. And the person that is passing says, tells them to be of brave heart. And it just means to have courage in the next part of the journey. 
Wow. So, yeah. Well, can you tell me what all you do? Because I, I just think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful what y'all are doing. Well, thank you. Um, we basically, we champion those who are experiencing grief or loneliness or nearing the end of life if, if they're at the end of life so we have um a couple hundred volunteers wow. about 50 to 60 of them they serve primarily as um, volunteers who they work with the care receiver um, they they serve the care receiver the other volunteers they serve in different capacities like at events and things but um, so the volunteers that work with care receivers, they serve as companions okay. to people who just, a lot of our, our um, care receivers are elderly yeah. and uh, they will serve as companions to them one to two hours a week. And they just get together and visit or play cards or go on walks or yeah. just share stories, things like that. And then we have friend and grief volunteers, and they um, serve one-on-one -on -one with people who are experiencing grief. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to pair them with, um, you know, if someone's lost a spouse, they, we try to pair them with someone uh, who, a, a volunteer that has also lost a spouse. Yeah. So, um, and then we, so, and we do grief retreats and grief support groups, stuff like that. And then our end of life, um, it's just people that sit and offer a bedside presence yeah. um, and comfort at the end of life. So we don't do any medical. It's all right. social and emotional support yeah. um, or educational support. Uh, we will help educate families um, you know, a lot of times they've never experienced the loss of a loved one. And so, you know, we should just share with them, you know, kind of what they can expect. And it's, it, it could be hand in hand with hospice, I guess, but um, we're more, we're more just like that, that presence and that support right. and not medical. Yeah. So. Do you find that, and I don't know, you know, in Alaska or in any other part of the country, I don't know how different it is or how, how much the same it is. Do you find that, uh, you know, these people don't have family to be with them at the end of their life, or do they also have family and y'all still provide someone to be there? Yeah, some have families. Um, yeah. and, and we, so we offer respite for those caregivers, those family yeah. members that are serving as caregivers. Um, but, so we are located on the Pioneer's Home ground and the Pioneer's Home, it's uh, basically a state run elder care facility. And okay. so I think they have about 60 residents and okay. I would say half of them have companionship volunteers. Okay. Um, and some of them though, you know, they're here from different parts of the state. And so they don't have family in town. So when it comes to them at end of life, um, our volunteers will sit bedside with them for, you know, as much as is needed. Right. Um, so, but they our volunteers that do end of life. Um, they also go into the hospital, they go into long-term right. care. And they will go into private homes as well. Yeah. So wow. it, some have family and, and some don't. Some have, you know, close friends, but no family in right. the area. And we live, uh, Sick is located on an island okay. too. So um, the coming and going is a little more complicated. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Or have you heard? The volunteers that have worked with people, especially in the beginning when they first start working with or spending time with these people at end of life, do, do they share stories or do they do they talk about that at all? Not necessarily what the person went through, but how it affected them when they first started yeah. doing this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And our volunteers go through an extensive training, and so um, they're pretty well prepared when they, when they enter into that role. Um, before I came on, I was a volunteer for about five years and I sat at, sat at the bedsides of, um, 
many people who were dying and every single death was was very different yeah. um but we find that a lot of our volunteers they come on and they want to volunteer because they utilized the services of Braveheart oh, at okay. some point and so they're kind of giving back in a way and they share really amazing experiences and one that I could share with you was um she was a pretty seasoned volunteer um and she went to sit bedside with someone in the hospital and um, Catherine, who's our program manager, we call her our matchmaker because she's very good <laughs> at, at pairing people. Oh, yeah. She, um, she had done an, a full intake with this woman that was at end of life and um, asked the woman some of the things, what do you like and what, what kinds of things would you like to have around you at the end? And um, she said she enjoyed country music. And so this one volunteer that was really loved country music, she brought in a, a tape player or whatever, something portable at the yeah. end there. And she played it for the woman. The woman was very, very near, very, very near to passing. And um, it, it registered on the heart monitors and every oh, she... Wow it showed she was responding to oh this, this music. Yeah. Wow. So um, it's, we, there's a lot of, you know, kind of neat stories like that. But, yeah. But, and it has a profound effect on the, on the volunteers. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure it would. Um, um, so there's like, there's a specific way that, sh that she matches people with like the volunteers with the people she's it isn't just okay you signed up and now this person needs something I'm just going to put you with them there's a yeah <laughs> um no she's very good at um she does a pretty thorough intake on the if someone signs up for services she does a thorough intake with them and and will you know I mean she'll do the whole you know what do you like what do you don't you like right. um you know it can be faith it can be um you know what are your hobbies and your interests right. were you know did were you a mom were you a dad you you yeah. know things like that and then the she knows the volunteers because she's done a really thorough intake with on the, the on the yeah. vol each volunteer as well yeah. and she just knows when she's talking with um, the new care receiver, like, oh, this volunteer would make an excellent um, wow. person for them. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. That's, I wouldn't have thought that would be needed, but I guess it does. I guess it works well that way. Yeah. What would you tell somebody, whether they are in Alaska where they could volunteer where you are or in another program like that, what would you how could you prepare someone, maybe give them an idea of what it's like to um, be with someone at the end of their life, to volunteer services and, and love on them? Yeah, well, I would say um, the, main, the main thing that I would say, especially if you're preparing to be an end-of-life volunteer, is to know that um, it's about the person that is going through that transition. It's about yeah. their experience and, and you're stepping into their experience. And so it's kind of like every birth is different. You know, um, I had two, two children and both the births were completely different. Right. Um, and so that's the same with the death experience. And, um, just depending on what that, that, um, I don't know. It depends on if they, you know, like for my, in, in my own case, I went to one death where, um, or end of life situation where she, she had very loud music blasting. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, it's about her and her experience. Right. And right. then I went to another where it was just very silent and very quiet, very peaceful, very, yeah. um, you know, and it just depends. So I think the main thing is to set your own expectations or anticipations or um, ideas of what it might be like. Set that yeah. aside and remember you're there helping them through 
to transition and helping them with their experience more so than anything. And we, you know, we have our volunteers go through pretty extensive end of life training Uh and um, they understand like lots of things culturally, um, you know, even different faiths, they might see, um, you know, something that someone their particular faith that you know like they might see somebody that's sitting with a rosary in their hand or something and and you can't freak out because that's their belief and that you have to honor whatever it is and um our volunteers are very very they just they're they love people they have a servant's heart um they just they want to be there for their neighbor and um so they go in, you know, it, the training is great and, and they come away with, you know, confidence and feeling prepared to serve in that capacity. Yeah. I could just offer, you know, please the, do. The, the process. Um, somebody, yes, please tell me about that. Okay. Somebody will contact Braveheart and um, they, so we offer trainings in the fall yearly. Um, And so we have a training for friend and grief volunteers um, and a training for end of life volunteers. Mm -hmm. And then we have a general training for, um, I guess it's our visiting volunteers or companion volunteers, but everybody attends that um, because that's so, but if somebody say came on in February, um, what what Catherine does is she pairs them with a seasoned volunteer. So they have like a mentor um, up until those months when they go through their own training. Okay. So they can come on at any time during the year. They just come right. in uh, kind of under a, a mentor. And then when they go through the training, then they kind of um, are off on their own. Or sometimes yeah. the volunteers like to stay paired together or yeah. um, but we have, you know, roughly 50, it's, it stays between 50 and 60 volunteers who Wonderful. are there in that capacity. And one yeah. volunteer might serve in every, every way. So you might right. have a visiting volunteer who also does end of life yeah. stuff. So it just depends, but I think we probably have 30 end of life volunteers. Yeah. So we can pretty much sit with someone around the clock if, if, we really needed to. If right. Needed to. That's wonderful. I volunteer at a pregnancy center. And actually today, I a girl came in who was wants to be a volunteer and the lady who needed to train her had to step out. And so she asked me to do it. So that was, oh. I've never done that before. That was kind of fun. <laughs> so I liked that. I liked that. What about, um, do y'all do any kind of fundraising? Do you accept donations? Like you do. What kind of fundraising yeah. do you all do? Um, well, so I, as the executive director, that's primarily my role is securing okay. the funding uh, because okay. all of our services are free. Um, so we primarily get our funding in three ways. One is through donors. Uh-huh. Um, and we have a, a wonderful donor base. Um, and then the other is another is grants. So mm-hmm. I write a lot of grants. And then the third is fundraising. And we have primarily five fundraisers throughout the year. Oh, wow. Um, and they're, they're kind of spaced, you know, pretty yeah. evenly. But we have our, the fundraiser we had in February is called Fill the Heart. It's mm-hmm. just a Facebook fundraiser. It's basically people donating and um, then the, the one that we recently had, it was the Alaska Getaways auction. It was an online auction and we had a cruise and some seaplane tickets and um, things like that, the, yeah. you know, Alaska Getaways. Um, and then upcoming is a Bulls event and we have um, artists here, ceramic artists here in town wow. um, that they create roughly about 300 bowls and it, it's a very very big event it's yeah. was a, a favorite event and so people will come in and, and purchase those bowls and they're beautiful beautiful bowls yeah. um and all the pros and then we have like restaurants donate soup and so they they get that as well um 
And then we have a buoy auction. And so these buoys are um, co collected from, they're beach combed from yeah. the shorelines all around. Um, and artists take them and transform, they paint them. And then the buoys hang through Main Street. They hang up the lampposts through, through town through the summer. Um, and we, it's a very big tourist Oh yeah. Place. Yeah. yeah. So, so it kind of decorates uh, the town for the summer. And then at the end of summer, people bid on them and that's a, oh, wow. a big fundraiser. Yeah. And then we have an Alaska airlines ticket fundraiser oh, in goodness. the, in the, um, around Christmas. Yeah. So it's, so that's it's a lot of fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. So it takes a lot of effort, but it's, it helps a lot. Good. It, help spend us. Yeah. That's wonderful. What is the population in Sitka? How big is it? It's about 8,000 people. Okay. Yeah. It, it increases in the summer months because it's, yeah. we have a lot of seasonal workers or fishermen. Sure. Or, um, so fishing and tourism is mm -hmm. kind of our, our yeah. big economy boosters. But um, yeah, some days you'll have so many ships in that um, it's devil. Well, okay. you know, you might have 15,000 people in town. Oh my goodness. That's a lot. 8,000 <laughs> residents and they closed Main Street for to yeah. accommodate that. And, you I'm know, but that. yeah, we're pretty understanding. We know that it's, yeah, that's what temporary you know, fuel, <laughs> and it fuels our economy. Yes, so. absolutely. It's a good thing yeah. for y'all. Yeah. Well, I, I love what you're doing. I think it's so kind. I think it's such a beautiful way to offer people dignity and um, just show love to these, you know, people who are ending their life, especially it makes me so sad to think of those that don't have family, that don't yeah. have anybody. I mean, yeah. gosh, what a, what a gift yeah. it is for someone yeah. to be there by their side. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank so, you. Yeah. Well, thank I you for for sharing all this with me. Is there anything else I, I didn't ask? Um, no, I, I would just say, you know, it's, it's a very unique organization. Um, but I think it would, it it's, we wish that every community had a Braveheart volunteers, yeah. um, you know, and, and primarily what we do is we visit people that, right. um, you know, and with the pandemic, grief and loneliness, our our requests for services really, really increased in those areas. Yeah. And um, so just when, you know, if, if you can't have a brave heart in your town, you know, it it um, it's helpful just to, you know, maybe go to a senior center or a, mm -hmm. an elder care facility and see if you can go in and volunteer there and and just sit with people and hear their stories. And yeah. um, because, you know, I look, our view is the Pioneer's Home and it's filled with 60 residents and that's 60 rich, amazing, fantastic lives that yes. are full of stories. And um, mm -hmm. there's, there's just, there's so much to be shared and, and learned from. So you know, if you don't have something like that in your community, um, maybe start it. Start something up. You know, <laughs> it's amazing know. to me, all these people that I've spoken with, they run on volunteers, like they need volunteers in everyone. And so, you know, I'm a little bit uh, biased and I feel like everybody can do something. You know, I, I've signed up with a, um, one of our, one of the ladies that I talked to, there's a program that will cook a hot meal for people. It's all over the United States and they just have to sign up to, to get one and you sign up for where you live. And I've already done it twice. It's just a meal. It's not, you know, oh. anything grand, but I, it's something I could do. And I wish everybody would do something because, you know, it takes this much time and effort yeah. and I just, I yeah. love it. I love seeing these kinds of organizations around. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. And thanks for asking us. Sure, absolutely. I hope you have a wonderful day with your sunshine. <laughs> thank you. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.